Praise the Lord. You know, I'm so glad you're tuning in with us today. You know why? Because there is a benefit package that comes along with the Lord, and I want you to hear all about it. So grab that pen. Come on, this is my famous saying. I say it all the time. Grab that pen and paper. Grab your Bible, and let's get renewed. Praise the Lord. Did you get your Bible? I hope you got your Bible and you're going to sit down with us now because let me tell you, grab a pen as well. Grab some paper because you might want to take some notes. You know, it's always good to go back and look on some of this stuff again. It, it'll help you. It helps you to grow in the Lord, you know. I, I, that's what I do a lot of times. I take some notes and I, I like to read different articles and things like that. You know, and, and it just, it really helps me to sometimes you know, think. The Bible tells us to meditate on the Word of God day and night, right? Meditate on it. Think about it a little bit, you know? And, and I was reading an article the other day, and, and, and it was talking about benefits. You know, the benefits. You know that, right? And, and, and it got me thinking a little bit, you know? I, I like to ponder on things for a while, and, and, and it just kind of got me thinking about it. You know, whenever a person is applying for a job, or a position with a company, you know, a lot of times they, they usually want to know, they say, well, well, what are the benefits, you know? What, what are the benefits to this? What am I getting as a benefit if I'm going to come to work here? You know, that's something that we, we have a tendency to do a lot in our lives when it comes to our natural circumstances, you know? Uh, uh, well, I'll do that, but what's my benefit? What do I get out of that? But why is it as a Christian when we signed on to the job, you know what I'm talking about, right? Because that's really what you did. You, you signed on to the job. Whenever we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, uh, obviously you entered into a partnership with Him, right? You entered into a partnership with Him to be about the Father's business. So, so that, that's really what it is. It's, it's about, you know, when I came to meet Christ, it's not, just, I don't, it's not just fire insurance. Come on, it's not just to keep me from going to hell. It's really about partnering with Him and His commission from this point on. You know, that's what we did. So if we signed on for that, well, of course, you know, going to heaven is one of those benefits. But, but I find that most Christians don't even look into the benefit package Man, that, that came with their salvation. You have such blessing coming to you when you got saved. I mean, such blessing. I mean, a lot of Christians just don't look past that fire insurance portion of it, you know, where, where my benefit is that I'm going to heaven, not to hell, and praise God for that. I'm not going to burn. You know, but there is so much more offered to you in this benefit package that the Lord has for you. I want you to hear that today. There is so much more than just fire insurance to keep you from going to hell and get you to heaven when you receive Jesus Christ. There is a benefit package that is waiting for you. Let's look in the verses. Go to Psalms chapter 103. We're going to read verses 1 through 5, but we're going to break it up a little bit, have some other things in between. But Psalms 103, beginning in verse 1, it said this, Bless the Lord... O oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. So you see David there in this psalm, he said, bless the Lord. He wants to bless the Lord. You know, it's like, wow, how do you bless the Lord? I mean, he has everything, right? He's got, he owns, well, I owed a pastor friend of mine used to, he was my, my former pastor many years ago, taught me and trained me in the Word and, and, and in church and ministry. He used to always say, my father owns a cattle on a thousand hills and all them taters under them hills. I mean, it's, God has it all. How do you bless the Lord, oh, my soul? And all that is within me, bless his holy name. You see, that's what David is doing here. He reminds us here that, that of our first priority, our focus and our purpose, the benefits are to help us fulfill this priority. Uh, see, that's what he's telling you. Of our first priority, what is our priority? Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that's within me, bless His holy name. Our first priority is to bless the Lord. When you got saved, that's the first response. That should be a blessing back unto the Lord. But, but if, if our focus and our, our, our purpose is all in that, you've got to know that God's benefits, the benefits are to help us fulfill 
this priority. The benefits God gave the whole. The benefits that God gave you are to help fulfill this priority. What is the priority? Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that's within me, bless His holy name. Oh, you see, wrapped up in this phrase, I want to say, is, is the Great Commission, go ye. Okay, just stick with me for a minute, right? He told His disciples, go ye into the world and preach the good news. See, wrapped up in this simple phrase here is the Great Commission to go ye. Because to bless the Lord man, is deeper than just an act of adoration. You see, you got to know that. Bless the Lord is more than just saying, oh, praise you, bless the Lord, oh, my soul today. It's more than just an act of adoration, such as, you know, shouts of praise to the Lord, you know. Hallelujah! That's not just blessing the Lord. I mean, let's look at the, the, the Greek word here, or the Hebrew. This is Old Testament, so it's Hebrew. The, the word here in Hebrew, it means this. It means to kneel. So to bless the Lord here is to kneel down before Him. In other words, it implies an act of adoration, but with a benefit. Okay, we're going we're gonna to dig a little deeper here. Okay, so, so the word means to kneel, but it's like this. It implies an act of adoration as I'm, as I'm kneeling before Him, right? but it has a benefit to it. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to explain it. In other words, um, I'd refer to it like this, as, as, in kneeling, as kneeling subject to the fulfillment of His desire. Okay. Um, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. It's an act of kneeling, so I'm going to kneel down before Him subject, right? I'm subject to Him to a fulfillment of His desire. Now, in other words, when God blesses man, He empowers him to prosper, okay? He empowers man to prosper or to benefit, okay? In other words, uh, he, oh man, he grants the desires of the heart, right? That's what He's doing. He, he's, he, when God blesses you, He's granting the desires of your heart. He's, he's empowering you to prosper. When, when the Lord blesses you, He empowers you to prosper, and to be successful or to, to receive benefit back from that. Oh, this is going to get good. He, he grants the desires of your heart. Now, let's look at Psalms chapter 37 for a minute, verse 4. Psalm 37 and verse 4, he said, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. I know you've probably heard that verse before, and it's, it's a good verse. Because see, if we delight ourselves in the Lord, what does He say? He'll grant the desires of my heart. Oh yeah, let me read another verse real quick. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. What does He tell us there? Jesus said it. These are His words. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Do you see that? Man... Seek first Him. So what does it mean? It's put Him priority in the situation and just seek the Lord first in His kingdom. Seek the kingdom of God in your life. What does that mean? That means search out for the, the blessing of God, the peace of God, the joy of the Lord. Come on. The joy of God. It's our strength. That's what it is. Seek first these things, the kingdom of God. And then all these other things, He said, your needs, your wants, your desires, your hurts, your sufferings, all these things, what? Will be added unto you. All the hurts that you have, God said, I'll, I'll add healing to you. All the sufferings that you're going through, I'll add blessing and prosperity to you. All these things, He said, I'll give you them. Matter of fact, He even told us in His Word, He said, I know everything that you need, even before you ask. See, He knows your need. He's there waiting for you. Seek Him first, and, and He'll add those blessings to your life. All right, let's go back to Psalms 103 now. We're going to go to verse 2 again. And it said this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Okay, now I like to do word studies, so we're going to break these down a little bit. It, it brings such revelation to these verses. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Okay. So forget, the word forget there, to forget not all his benefits. 
The word forget there is, um, I don't want to say, well, let's do it. Here's the definition. To mislay, that is, to be oblivious of, from want of memory or attention. Okay. So, bless the Lord, O my soul, and don't be oblivious of his benefits. You see that? In other words, he is telling us in this verse that we need to know the benefits of God. We need to understand them. We need to search them out and get a hold of them. Because he said, forget not. He said, don't be oblivious to my benefits. You know, so many times I think as Christians, we're, we're, we're taught, you know, oh, you just got to be holy and righteous. You know, that, that you, you got to live, uh, uh, we, we've heard it this way before, you know, that, that you got to be poor in order to be righteous. You can't have good things. Be, you know, just be righteous. That's what it is, you know, that, that poor is a church mouse, we said. These type of things. But according to this verse, he said, don't, don't be oblivious to my benefits. In other words, you got to come to know them. Now, after that, when he said, forget not my benefits, right? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Okay. So he said, don't be oblivious to them. But now David here, at this point, he begins to list them. Okay. So if you're wondering, well, what are the benefits of God? I mean, I don't know what that is. And we're fixing to find out because David begins to list them after that. So, so I, I'm going to say just some of the benefits, really. I mean, when he lists them here, there's a whole lot more benefits than just what we're going to find. But David begins to list them here. But they're, they're, I think every benefit is really wrapped up in these that David begins to talk about here. Now, let's go to verse 3. So we're in Psalms 103, right? Psalms 103. Verse 3, he said this, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. So, forget not all his benefits. What's one of the benefits? He forgives all thine iniquities. Now, iniquities has been a word, I think, that's just kind of really hard to grasp. And I think it's one of the most difficult things to understand. And most people are like, what is that? I mean, what is an iniquity, right? We don't talk about it a lot in the church. It's like, well, you got iniquity in your life. So, so let's talk, let, let's get through this. Uh, I, th I heard Jesse Duplantis, if you're familiar with him, I heard him define it like this one time. So the Bible tells us, first of all, he forgiveth all thine iniquities. Okay, this is what iniquity is. Iniquity is this, it's defined like this. It's all your twisted stuff. Okay, it's twisted thinking, it's twisted intents, it's twisted motives. That's what it is. It, it's things that aren't sin yet, but will lead you there. Okay? So it, it's not a sin. An iniquity is leading you to sin. Okay. Uh, let me give you a few examples of that because uh, this is dangerous thinking sometimes. It's like this. It's the, it's the well, I wish just sister so-and-so would just move on. You know, she's not like us. She don't dress like us. She don't talk like us. I just wish she'd move on and go somewhere else, you know. That's twisted thinking. It's not led to sin yet because the next thing you know is that continues to dwell in the heart and eventually you're doing what you can to push them out the door. Being rude, hateful those kind of things. It's that twisted thinking in your mind, you know? Here's another one. Well, I, I like this. Or it's the, oh, we need to pray about that syndrome, right? I call it gossip. Gossip disguised as concern. And maybe you've heard that before. Now, I'm touching on some, I'm stepping on some church toes today is what I'm doing. Because in reality, it's like, oh, you know, we need to pray for Brother Bobby. I saw Brother Bobby the other day and you wouldn't believe what he is doing. We need to pray about that. That's twisted thinking. That's not concern for his life or salvation. That's trying to get into gossip. Ooh, what was he doing? I want to know what he's doing out there now. That's what I'm talking about. That's twisted thinking. If you see Brother Bobby doing something he shouldn't be doing, you need to keep it to yourself and take it to the Lord. That's what it's about. Taking it to the Lord. So see, this is, this is that twisted thinking. <coughs> Excuse me. This is that twisted thinking that I'm talking about. It's the iniquities in our life. You know what speaks to me about this, though? It lists our iniquities and not our sin. Didn't you, wait a minute, did you read that? 
It said, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Nowhere did he say anything about sin. I, I, I thought about that when I was reading this verse. I'm like, wait a minute. He, he said, he forgives me of my iniquities, but what about my sin? Oh, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. Oh, okay. You can see, the problem is we're no longer full of sin, right? We, we've been cleansed from it. But iniquity, I, I say this, it'll sneak up on you and cause you to fall into sin. See, the benefit of the Lord, man, if you get that revelation, I'm telling you, the benefit of the Lord is not that He'll forgive you of your sin. Because see, He forgave you of your sin, that's how come you have the benefit of the Lord. So the benefit of the Lord isn't the forgiveness of sin. That comes by grace and salvation, right? Through faith in Jesus Christ. So that is how we get to this place of what? God's blessing on our life. And through that, He said, forget not my benefits. Because one of my benefits is, I'll forgive you of your stinking thinking, I call it. Your twisted ways that you try to do, that lead you into it. If you're not careful, man, iniquity will slip up on you and will cause you to sin. See, the benefit is that God forgives you of that iniquity. He forgives you of that twisted thinking. So next time when Sister Sally, you don't like what she's doing and you want to get her out of there, Remember, God will forgive you for thinking that way. Oh, that's good stuff. So that's a benefit. He forgives us of our iniquities. Thank the Lord for that. You know, I know that's in our life a lot of times that brings condemnation because we automatically begin to think, well, I've fallen away from God. Lord, forgive me for my sin. You know, and it's not sin. It's iniquity. And it's one of God's benefits. He forgives you of it. All right, so let's look at another. What's the second half of that verse? He said, who healeth all thy disease. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Say that with me. All. What did he say? He healeth all thy disease. Come on. I think we need to say it again. All. He healeth all thy disease. See? I want you to see this because that's a benefit. Man. Who healeth all thy diseases. All here. The Hebrew word is defined as malade. And it's this, it's, it means any sickness or disease of the body, okay? Say that with me, come on, any. He, the word is malady, it's any sickness of the disease or, or of the body. That's what it is, any sickness or disease of the body. God said that's a benefit of God. You should be living in the benefit of God because through that, he said, look, if you want to bless me, this is how you do it. You don't forget about my benefits. First of all, you, re you, you ask me to come in and forgive you of your iniquity. You, you receive my healing that you have. It's a benefit that I have. We, we do not have to accept sickness. Because it's a part of our life or because, you know, well, it's been in my family for years, you know. Uncle Bob had, had heart di had diabetes, you know, and, 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 and his mom had diabetes and my parents had diabetes, so I'm going to have diabetes. Saints, we don't have to accept that kind of sickness in our life just because somebody else has had it. The Word tells us that He healeth all thy disease. It's a part of the benefit package of God. Mm. Okay, let's keep rolling. Verse 4. He said, Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Oh, did you see that? Verse 4 said, It's a benefit now. Remember, we're talking about the benefit package of God. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Okay. Not only has God protected me from the devil trying to destroy me, physically. I mean, you've probably had some of those near-death experiences in your life. Man, I've had a couple times where I, I know God saved me. I, I came within, I don't want to say inches of my life, I came within centimeters of my life being taken away at one time. And I know God was there with me because there's just no other way. It, it's, 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 you've probably had some of those experiences in your own life too. See, not only has God tried to protect me from, from the enemy, who, the devil who's tried to destroy me physically in my life, but he's also kept my life from destruction concerning my ways. See that? Steering me on the right paths that I should go and, 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 and financially keeping me so that I didn't lose everything that I had and bring me to a place of distraught. Uh, emotionally, uh, I mean, things in just everyday life, God has kept me. That's what he said when he mean, when he, he said, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. It's, destruction is not just about, well, destroying your physical body. It's, it's about 
your mental and, and emotional and financial state. God said, look, part of my benefit is that I, I deliver you from destruction. Oh, man. I'm telling you, if you're living in any of those circumstances today, you need to go back to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry I didn't accept your benefit package, but I'm looking into it now. And I see that you have healing for my body. I see that you have finances for me. I see, Lord, that you have provision, food, and everything I need for me. I see that's a part of the benefit that you have for me, God. And watch God begin to open up the doors and windows of heaven, as he says, and pour out blessing in your life. Okay, let's, let's keep going in this verse now. Second half of this verse, he said, Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Oh, that's good stuff. He crowneth thee, it says, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. In other words, look at this. To crowneth is to encircle. That's what it means. It means to encircle. Uh, two, two references to that. It's to encircle as in to attack. Okay? Um, they, they crowneth on the walls of Jericho. It's what they did. They started marching around the walls of Jericho, right? They encircled it. Matter of fact, it said seven days they circled it. They circled around the walls of Jericho, you know? And through that, they encircled it. So they crowneth it. That's what he's referring to there. So it could be as an act like that, to attack. Or it could be to protect. Like a, like a parent would do, you know, like you've done your child. When your child is scared and they run to you and you, you encircle them, right? You crowneth them with your arms is what you're doing. And, and you're, you're protecting them. Oh, that's what it's about. See, see, God's love and kindness will surround you. That's what he's saying here. Who, who, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. He said, look, look, his kindness will surround you. And his tender mercies will surround you. Man, I just sense such a, such a presence of the Lord with that. Maybe you're feeling that right now. Just the Lord is just, you feel like he's wrapping his arms around you. See that? Oh, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Somebody right now is just, you're, you're, you need that. You just need God to wrap his arms around you. And right now he's doing it. You, you can sense his tender mercies. God's tender toward us. Amen. His loving kindness, his, his tender mercies will surround you. It's the favor of God upon you is what it is. You know, people will like you, and they don't know why. That, that's, what, that's what this is talking about. God will crown you. He'll surround you. He'll, he'll encompass you. He'll, he'll wrap himself around you. And, and it's his love and kindness and his mercies toward you. That's God's favor on your life. It's like people just love you. They don't know why they like you. They're giving you promotion because of it. They're giving you stuff. They're blessing you because of it. That's God's tender mercies. Oh, it's one of his benefits. Hmm, this is good. Verse 5. Let's go to verse 5 there in Psalms 103. It said, Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. That's what it means, good things. He said, Who satisfy thy mouth with good. That's what he's referring to, good things. Oh, yeah. See, I'm going to tell you, much controversy or confusion on the direct meaning to this verse right here. But this is what it means. Satisfieth is to make full. In other words, he said, I'll fill you to satisfaction. That's one of God's benefits. Amen. Thy mouth is... Here, the confusing part of this verse is the word thy mouth. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, right? With good. So we know satisfieth is what? To make full or to be filled to satisfaction. But what about thy mouth? That's been the confusing part in this definition. The mouth is the confusing part. One definition is this, uh, the word ornament. In other words, uh, your mouth will be adorned with good. That'd be the way the reference to say it. In other words, you'll have good things to say. Oh, good things to say. You, you give glory. In other words, glory is given to God all the time. Why? Because he said, I'll adorn your mouth with good things. Good things will come forth. That's what he's, that you won't have anything else to speak about, but good. Why? Because God is blessing your life. The blessing of the Lord is upon you, and you have so much good to say because God is with you. Let's finish out this verse. The last part of it, it said, Thy youth is renewed like eagles. That's a benefit to God. 
your youth will be renewed within you. Come on. The word said, forget not the benefits of the Lord. Why? For they are to enable us to bless the Lord. Can you imagine that? You can bless the Lord today by what? By allowing His benefits to be in your life. The blessings of health and healing and provision to the point where He says, look, I'll have so much in your life, good things will come forth for it. Let me tell you, the Lord has blessed me and I want to bless Him back. I'm thankful for what He has provided me for. I, I have peace. I have joy. The blessings of the Lord. I have been given provision. And God has made a way for me. Let me tell you, today, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh your soul, and forget not His benefits. Father, we thank you for your word and your promise. We thank you for your benefits, Lord. And I pray for each and every one today, God, Lord, that you would touch their life and bless them, Lord, that their benefits, Lord, that you have provided for them would be made known in their life, God, and that every good and perfect and blessed word would come forth from them, Lord. The fullness would come out of their mouths, Lord, of the blessing of God. I thank you for that and I praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. And amen. Oh, bless the Lord today, for he has done good things. Amen. And he wants to bless your life. Come on, write to us sometimes. The address is there. Send us an email. Check us out on the web. Whatever you want to do, contact us and let us know how things are going in your life. And may God bless you abundantly today. Amen. Have you ever known somebody that had been set free but wasn't free indeed? Or maybe yourself is struggling in that. You know, the Word of God has promised us that Jesus come to set us free, but yet free indeed. If your life is in bondage still, but you've been set free in Christ, struggling with issues or facing troubles or trials, this series by Pastor Donnie Hartzog will transform your life. It'll give you the tools necessary that'll take you to the place of not just free, but free indeed. Get your copy today. Amen. I hope this word has blessed you as much as it's blessed me. And I encourage you, meet us back here next time on Renewed. Yeah.